For 11 years, I was a photographer at the Dayton Daily News. And because I worked the nights, most of my assignments were shooting sports. Professional, college, high school, I shot them all. And people would see me out and they would say, Ron, how do I take better sports pictures? How do I take better action? There's no one big thing. There's just a lot of little things. I guess I would start with having a camera that, that, that where you ha has a motor drive and it could shoot at least seven frames up to 12 frames a second. That helps because as you're shooting sports, you want to follow the action with your camera, following the focus, and lay on their motor drive as the action happens inside the camera. And that's the way to capture peak action pictures. Here's some examples of learning to anticipate the action and actually taking the picture before you actually see it. Here's a picture of uh, the University of Dayton football coach, Coach Kelly, just laying into a, a player as he comes off the field. And I, I was just focusing on the coach, and uh, I just laid on the motor drive, and he just happens to get into some kid's ear, and this is just a really nice moment. This picture actually won uh, one year of, of the best of Cox for a best sports picture. Uh, our youngest daughter, Kendall, she played high school volleyball, then she went on to play uh, college volleyball at Liberty University. But actually, I, I pre-focused on, um, on the net because she was a middle, and I wanted to take some nice uh, action pictures, but I just pre-focused on the net, and when the action came, came close to her, I just laid on a motor drive, probably got about uh, seven to ten pictures, and here I, I was able to capture her actually blocking another player as the other opposing player tries to do a little uh, dink shot. Here's a picture of LeBron James his senior year. Um, his team I did like a... They they did, they played games all in all over the United States his senior year, and they played um, at the University of Dayton. They played Alter, and uh, I saw a breakaway and I focused uh, focused on the rim, and I just started laying on a motor drive when he was about at the foul line, and I just got a really nice action picture of him. And this is another good example of if you shoot high, shoot down on the action. It gives you a little bit more light because the players are looking up towards the light source. And it also clears up your background really nice. Sports Illustrated for Kids actually used this picture and they made a playing card out of it. Here's a picture of Coach Jim Trussell as, uh, as they were getting ready to come out, the, come out of the tunnel as they were hosting Michigan State. This is one of my uh, favorite. This, this, is, this is my favorite Jim Trussell picture that I've ever shot little story on this is actually I, I, I saw his wife about six months because I actually gave gave them an 11 by 14 of this picture and um, Mrs. Trestle, I think her name's Ellen, she told me this is the only picture that, that the coach allowed her to hang up in the house and that was, uh, that made me feel good. Here's a picture of a Chaminade Julian football player. I think he was a senior. They're, uh, I think it was the first game of the season and it's starting to rain and he's leading them in calisthenics and warm-ups and He's just feeling his oats, and he lets out a big old yell, and uh, I just happened to, uh, I saw him, and I laid on my motor drive, and I, just, I caught a really nice moment. I also have my camera totally on manual. I set the ISO. The ISO is telling the camera how sensitive you want it to be to, to light, and then I'll shoot my shutter speed at least 500th of a second or faster. And your aperture will be set that kind of depends on whether you're shooting outside or inside. If I'm shooting outside, say for example, football or lacrosse, I want to shoot my f-stop a little bit to gives me a little bit of wiggle room for depth of field. Depth of field is how much is going to be in focus in that picture. And um, I want a little bit of wiggle room, so I want to shoot at least five, six, or maybe seven. That way, if I'm, I'm a little slow on the button or the camera doesn't quite grab focus, I have a little bit of, um, uh, little bit of a buffer as far as this being spot on on focus. If you're shooting inside, say like basketball or volleyball, a lot of times you're going to run into very dimly lit gymnasiums. And, and you're, not going to have, you're not going to have that flexibility uh, for your f-stop to be to be smaller usually when you're inside you have to shoot whatever whatever is wide open for that lens i think this lens here is uh, is 2.8 
So you have to be spot on on your focus when you're wide open with your lens. Your lens, your f-stop, what controls your depth of field. Now, when you are shooting inside, there are a few little things that you can do to make, to make better use of that inside light. For example, if you're able to uh, sit up in the stands and shoot down on, let's say, basketball, when those basketball players are looking up to shoot, they're looking up towards that light source. And that will really help you get sometimes as much as, as an extra stop, stop and a half of that light. Versus if they're, if they're, have, they're having their head down away from that light source, you're, you're not making the best use of that light. You can also try a thing called panning. Panning is when you, um, you follow the action with your camera and you slow, show your, show, slow your shutter speed way down. Say like a sixtieth of a second and you follow them and you're shooting pictures as they're cutting across the frame. Panning doesn't really work as they're coming to you and away from you. Panning really only works when they're cutting um, through the frame, left to right or right to left. Right. When I'm shooting um, outside, let's say football, I always want to have the action coming towards me. For example, uh, a football game, I usually get at least 20 yards in front of the offense. That way the offensive team is coming towards me. The more you know about a sport, the better you can anticipate what's going to happen. Let's say in, in a football game, it's third down and five yards to go for a first down. You're probably going to pass. Um, so I would probably either focus on the quarterback knowing he's going to pass, or I would focus on the first or second best receiver. Follow him with my motor drive and just stay on the motor drive and just bam, 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 bam. Follow it that way. Something else I try to do was I'm, when I'm shooting, especially outside, is I shoot like this. I look through the frame like this with one eye, and then also I'm following the action with this eye. That helps you not stay focused on one particular player. Say I'm following a right wide receiver this way, going this way, following him, but I'm also keeping an eye on the quarterback, and if he goes a different way with the receiver, you can pick up a lot quicker if you shoot with two eyes. The more pictures you take, the better chances of you catching a really nice action picture. When I shot, when I shot Bengals or Buckeyes, I would shoot, it would be nothing to shoot 1,400, 1,600 pictures. Out of that many pictures, if I had 15 pictures that I thought were pretty solid, pretty good, I'd take that. So shoot a lot. Have fun. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.